welcome everyone. My name is Lincoln Clark and I am the partner in charge of the global semiconductor practice for KPMG in our Silicon Valley office. With me is Scott Jones, a principal in KPMG strategy practice who will also be presenting today. This webcast will review the results of KPMG's most recent global semiconductor survey and provide our outlook for 2018 how the executives feel like their R&D spend is aligned with the market needs and market opportunities. Uh, roughly 50% uh, you know, believe that they're efficient, uh, you know, very efficiently or um, efficiently or very efficiently aligned. So roughly 50% you know, see you know, there's certainly opportunity there to better align their R&D investments with, with the market needs. Um, you know, I, I think this is, is something that in a changing landscape that uh, the semiconductor industry is undergoing right now as their products are needing to meet a more diverse range of customer needs, uh, this is certainly going to be a focus. If you think about the industry and the transformation that it's gone through, the largest pieces of the P&L for a semiconductor company uh, is obviously going to be the cost of goods sold. That has been transformed through the uh, fab, fab light and fabless model, uh, moving you know the capital requirements to a foundry and essentially you know going to a, a contract manufacturing model. The next largest line item on the P&L uh, generally is going to be R&D. So you know we see this as being a disruptive area where companies are going to look to get more efficient uh, and much more selective in how they manage their portfolio of investments. And I think this highlights that opportunity. We also asked executives during this time. Where do they see uh, methodologies or opportunities that they could leverage to improve R&D efficiency? Um, you know, one of the ones that I think we were surprised to see as the number one answer was zero-based budgeting for portfolio management and resource allocation. You know, this has really been made popular through Texas Instruments and Intel. Uh, you know, certainly a, a, a methodology that has come back into vogue, but I think the, you know, amount that it was slightly over 50% that, that stated that they were Leveraging this within with inside their company walls uh, was surprising that you know it was that prevalent in the industry. Um, number two, I think the use of data and analytics, uh, you know, we see that as as certainly an opportunity for companies that are going to be uh, you know being more tactical about how they're managing resources, understanding what it takes to deliver programs to market. Uh, and, you know, leveraging technology platforms that are available to them that, you know, perhaps were more expensive or not very user-friendly just, uh, you know, five to ten years ago. Uh, number three and four are really some something that we kind of think is a bit innovative in the industry. They're really starting to use approaches that have been, uh, you know, kind of brought along in the software side of technology, increasing the use of modular designs and reuse, and then using an agile development process, a kind of use of scrum teams and sprints uh, in areas where you can apply that to kind of the semiconductor uh, development life cycle. These are areas where I think, you know, you're starting to see cross-pollination of best practices from uh, software companies and some of the, the technology platform companies like a Google and a Facebook and seeing those start to uh, be leveraged by semiconductor companies in the R&D process.